This presentation is an insight into the basic principles and methods that are used along with standard practice when installing ground gas membranes. We will provide an overview on the range of ground gas membrane products and the tools and techniques required to complete a successful installation of ground gas membranes. This video does not cover the complete installation of a ground gas protection system, which also includes building structure and ventilation requirements. Our range of ground gas membrane products include Memtech M1 Membrane Memtech R1 Radon Membrane Memtech Titan VOC Membrane Memtech Liquid Gas Barrier LGB Memtech Gas Tape 50 Memtech Gas Over Tape 150 and Memtech Detailing Strip As well as the Memtech range of products, you will also require a heat gun with power cable and a suitable power supply. The use of rollers for pressure sealing on the membrane seams. Scissors or cutting tools. Tape measures for confirming dimensions. Black and white marker pens. And cleaning tools to get the membrane in the right condition. Correct PPE should always be worn. Exact details will vary, depending on the construction site, and the specific, COSH, requirements. Here, we can see some damage. In this instance, the membrane has been burnt through. To repair this, we are going to mark 100 mm overlaps from the point of damage using a white marker. To form the repair, there are a couple of options. We could use a self-adhesive membrane, or we could heat weld a patch. In this instance, we use a 300 mm self-adhesive membrane. Using scissors, Cut a suitable section of membrane. Round off the corners. Activate the bitumen with heat and apply the patch, rolling it firmly into place. Once detailed, check the seams and edges. Rounding off the corners to the patch, minimizes the risk of unpicking and the edges being kicked up. Damage to gas membranes and their repairs, should be recorded, in case a verification officer wishes to confirm the detail, or what the problem was. In this case, the damage has been identified, and the markers give an indication of the overlap allowed in the repair. Here, there is a more severe cut in the membrane. This requires a slightly bigger repair. Again, mark the 100 mm overlap from the point of damage. Additionally, there is a pin mark here, which has been identified as well. In this instance, it is quite a large area to patch. As an alternative to using a self-adhesive product, we can use the preparatory membrane that matches the product that we have been lining our building with. Again, we trim the membrane and round the corners off. This time, we are going to heat fuse the membrane. Locate the membrane in the required position, making sure the surface areas are clean. Starting off from the center, we activate as much of a seam as we can. The corners are rounded off to allow us to continue the seam around. Round corners also minimize the risk of pick points, which could be a weak spot in the fuse between the membranes. As you can see, the detailing is carried out by working in a diagonal formation and just shutting off between the sections. The white markers have now disappeared under the patch. If they were put in place by the verifier, it can help to add a fresh marker so they can see your patching has fallen within the perimeters required. At the end of the work, we carry out our own checks. A pick test, as can be seen here, has revealed a weak spot. This is quite common when you are hand welding, especially when you are working round in a circle or other awkward formations. This is simply repaired by applying heat and rolling. 
Our final part of our installation is recording the work that we have done. This will require photographic evidence as a record to accompany the drawings. Use a sign-off sheet to quantify the amount of work which has been done.